Hello, it's Jesse here. I'm working on a little project here. I'm going to try to replate something, electroplate something, with nickel plating. Um, either for the 40 Harley or the Triumph Tiger. Or I'm going to make something for fun. But either way, I need to, another, I need to do something first. I need to make this power supply. So I'm going to take this old power supply here for something I don't need it for anymore. Um, it's a 110 adapter, taking 110 volts, alternating current from the house to the wall, or from the wall, you know, and creating a, an output of five volts direct current. So when we're plating something, we want to have a low, a low output of direct current. We need direct current, otherwise um, you don't really have a good finish on your, on your plating. So going to cut the end off here, put a couple clips on it, then I'll have that set up, then I'm going to make a jumper wire, and uh, well, when I get to that next point after I make this thing, I'll, I'll go into detail on what's going on there, but for right now, this is step one, making the power supply for the electro electroplating process. All right, so here we go. Here's the power supply. I got it all modified here. I got the the alligator clips crimped on and nice heat shrink on there. Didn't have to do that, but I did it anyway. <laughs> then here's that jumper cable. Made that up too. Okay, well, I did the power supply because I wanted a continuous power supply, of course. I um, You could use batteries and stuff. Six-volt lantern battery. Um even lower voltages down to around one volt but you may want to stick with like the lower voltages like five six and smaller because uh you'll end up getting a a better shinier smoother finish and you can use higher voltage dc power supplies for extra plating but you won't just get you just won't get good results and stuff like apparently this lower voltage does so there's that part. I think we're ready for step two, so we'll do that next. All right, here we are, ready for step two on the electroplating process. We're gonna be doing some nickel plating, remember? Um, in the previous video there, I was mentioning that we're gonna be doing electroplating with a with nickel plate. So we have, our, we have our ingredients here, we have our vinegar, which is, needs to be distilled vinegar, 5% uh, acidity or higher, glass container, and uh, some salt, and our nickel anodes, pure nickel anodes here, and then our power supply. So here we are, next step, step two. We're gonna fill the glass container with the distilled vinegar leaving about an inch from the top. I don't need as much. I could have done like a smaller container, like a like a mason jar or something, but we kind of want to see better with what's going on. So, so the bigger the better, right? <laughs> All right. So there's that. Now we're gonna dissolve a little bit of some salt into the vinegar. The amount of salt doesn't quite matter. So, what we'll do is we'll just, you know, put some in a, put some on a, the spoon here. The reason why the amount doesn't matter is because um, it's, it's not all important to do with a lot. The purpose of the salt is just to increase electri electrical conductivity in the vinegar. So the more current that flows through it, the faster we can. We can uh, dissolve the nickel, but uh, too much salt, too much, too much salt's bad because too much current can lead to an oversaturation of the solution, which would lead to poor plating results. So we're gonna use it sparingly. We got quite a bit of liquid here, so this is probably enough. 
And if we don't have enough, well then, whatever, I guess. So, here we go. <clears throat> now we're going to place the two pieces of pure nickel into the vinegar and uh, the salt solution with with this with the vinegar and salt solution to the point to where they both stick out into the air, but we can't get them to touch, of course. So we're going to uh, um, put it in there like this, and then we're gonna hold it. Hold on, I might need to. I'm gonna do this real quick. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. I needed two hands. So I bent it like that. A nice uh, bent in it like that. Put them across from each other. So there we go. All right. Okay. So then uh, next we're going to connect connect the power supply. One hour alligator leads from the positive terminal to the one to the one electro nickel electrodes, and then now the. It doesn't really matter which one. So now we're gonna do that. So we got the negative one. Mark the black. Just gonna put it here. We're gonna run the positive over here. Got it marked the white. All right, there we go. So we want to make sure these alligator clips do not touch the vinegar. So of course they're on the outside. So, and they don't contaminate, that way they don't contaminate the solution for whatever kind of material or metal it's made out of or whatever. Now we're going to plug the power, I did this first, so I didn't want some sort of arcing and weird stuff to happen. So, now we're going to put the, we're going to power it. So, just take your power supply and plug it in over here. All right, here we go. Well, hopefully something happens here. It's worked before, so <laughs> just making a little video about the situation now. So the nickel source connected to the negative lead should start to create a hydrogen bubbles on it. So this is the negative one. I don't know if I can see the bubbles or not. Oh yeah, look at there, there's the bubbles. Something's happening. Okay. And then there's our hydrogen bubbles. Like I said, and the positive lead, lead over here, if it's doing anything, let's see. Positive lead should be creating some bubbles too. Don't really see them yet. So, anyways, they're supposed to be creating oxygen bubbles. So, well, after a while, this solution will turn light green. So then that makes, we're going to be making our nickel acetate solution. That's the actual term of the solution we're making. So if we get blue, red, yellow, or any other weird color, <laughs> it means our nickel solution source was not pure. But uh, these were pure nickel uh, anodes, so they should be, we should be good. We should have a, a nice uh, light green solution here. If it's cloudy, if it's green, and it's cloudy, uh, we have an impure nickel source. So also, so. All right. So uh, I guess what's next is uh, preparing the metal we're going to be doing. That's step three. So uh, we'll work on that one. So in the meantime, I'll let this sit here for a few hours or however long it takes to get our solution to turn light green. So stay tuned. This could be interesting. What happens here? Okay, so as we're waiting for our solution to turn light green, we're going to work on uh, preparing this item to get plated. Um, yeah, it's just a chunk of copper tubing. Um, we're using it for a sample piece or, uh, yeah. So um, we don't want to, like, put in something that we want to use and find out something's wrong, you know. So we're going to do a test piece first. 
So the cleaner your conductive object is, the better it'll plate. Um, you don't want any grease on it. You don't want any oxidation. Don't. So we got like rust, tarnish, you know, whatever. That's what oxidation would be considered. Um, or general grime on the surface. So if we're looking at our surface here, and it looks relatively clean, other than there's some letters on here, which we can, it's like ink of some type probably. So we'll probably remove that. Who knows what would happen. Um, um, there's some sort of, you know, most likely on everything out in the air, it tarnishes over a while. So there'll always be something on your item for some sort of oxidation. So it just needs to be cleaned up anyway. So a little dish soap, water, whatever will clean it up. Um, harder stuff, you might want to use some like steel wool, sandpaper. And then make sure you get all the, then wash it after that so that way all the the grime or whatever from the the sandpaper and stuff isn't on there so create problems or whatever maybe so all right so then i'll work on cleaning this piece up here and then maybe we'll be ready for step four when this stuff turns light green it's not turning quite light green yet but a lot of activity over here on the negative terminal and there's something going on over here, maybe. I don't know. Sometimes I think I see some bubbles and whatever. So, just gotta be patient. Take some time. So, alright. Stay tuned. Okay, here we go. About four hours later, and the solution is starting to turn a light green hue to it. So, it's getting there. We'll have to wait some more hours, it looks like, probably. Okay, here we are back. It's eight hours into the process of making the solution, and you can tell, or I'm wooden, you can tell, I can see it anyway. This is light, a little light green. Um, it's a lot different tone than it was when I first put the vinegar in. I can see that it's got a green hue to it. Um, I'm probably going to let this run overnight, and then in the morning I'll see where it's at. And, it is what it is. I think I don't know if I want to go much more than that. I don't. I don't really know if it matters, but we can definitely tell that we got the negative side here. The bubbles are coming off really nicely, and we can see bubbles over there. So we have hydrogen over here getting produced, and we have oxygen over there being produced. Um, yeah, so whatever is going on, it's happening. This is it's the solution is getting created. So um, I'll let this, like I said, I'll let this run. And if it looks like it's about the same in the morning, maybe I'll just let it run for a while longer. I don't think it'll hurt anything. Um, maybe it would have gone, well, gone quicker if I was doing more than five volts. But I don't want to, when I go to plate, I want to, I want to be able to plate with the five volts, the low voltage or current, remember? So I didn't make a solution, a uh, power supply, I made a, a power supply for plating. So I guess we're at the mercy of five volts here. So, but it's all right. Um, I don't think that matters. I didn't read anywhere or when I did this before that it mattered. So, so I'm just kind of doing a walk through again here on this. So, yeah, let's we'll see what it looks like in a little bit later. All right, here we go. It's 14 hours later. It's light green. Definitely light green compared to the white, the clear that I put in a while ago. So, I think we're ready to move on to step four, the plating. So, here I got that piece all cleaned up. So, yeah, let's move on to step four, letting the piece. Okay, here we are, about ready for step four. Just want to mention a couple things about the solution I made and the part I'm going to play. Uh, the preparation of it. Okay, we'll just talk about that a little bit. But um, the solution. 
I just want to clear this up a little bit here just to make, make sure that the last videos were kind of just like to the point and not really explan explanatory. So uh, when this negative one here and this positive one were charged off the power supply that was plugged into the wall, um, the nickel is being taken away from the positive electrode and propagating in the solution across to the negative charged anode here. So it was coming off of our positive because I haven't marked as positive here. White, yeah. So I had that marked as positive. Um, the hydrogen bubbles here. I knew that was happening because the hydrogen bubbles were being created. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the nickel was being deposited into the solution, which created it to turn green. And we could tell that was happening because the solution was turning green. And the bubbles, remember those bubbles? They were propagating on the um, on that anode there. Um, so anyways, with this power supply, this is a five volt one, remember that? So I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I was using, we put it in the vinegar here. It took about 20 hours to get to this green saturation tone right here. Um, well, the higher voltage and amps, this would this would have went a little bit quicker but yeah that's all right i didn't want to make two power sources i didn't want to like get confusing with a, a higher voltage one and then switching out and going to a smaller voltage one so i'm just going to stick with the same power supply for the whole thing because we want we want low voltage direct current when we plate the item next here so um also the distance between the two anodes here the positive the positive and the positive here and the negative one here. Um, the distance here, amount of distance it has to travel across the solution and depth or whatever makes a difference also for how fast this will turn light green. So we could have ran 12 volts. It probably maybe reduced this down to a good half the time. But, um, and you can do that as well. Um, but anyways, this is just like an example here on little non-industrial scale <laughs> electroplating, of course. Just this is an easy thing. I'm just trying to show how easy it kind of is. So the solution here is good forever if it doesn't get contaminated. Um, I mean by that is like you put it in a dirty part or stuff falls in it. Um, put it in the bad bad part that causes a uh, not pure or whatever you know nickel source these were these are pure nickel sources so we're good there um and the the more i plate stuff with this the darker the solution will get there's nothing to worry about there um yeah it'll get darker uh the more we we, we uh, plate things because the nickel continues to build up in the solution as as we plate stuff because, yeah, it still gets deposited and stuff as we're plating. So, yeah, for the part preparation now, um, nickel plating doesn't really cover up scratches very well. So we need to make sure this piece is nice, clean, smooth for finish on it. Uh, on the item that's getting plated, of course. Um, it's very important it's clean. I can't stress that enough um, because bad things can happen to your plating process when you're doing it. Um, so we need to make sure the back side of the item is even clean. Even if it's hidden when it's in service, the item that you're plating is being used. Um, like an instance to here, this is a tube, so we gotta make sure this inside's clean too. And I cleaned that up too, it's really nice. I didn't really go into detail about that. I wanna make sure that I talk to you about that. I'm gonna have to wipe it down again because I'm touching it. Um, you're, you have skin on, you have oil on your skin. Um, so now, so now it's going to like, if it would sit here eventually for years or whatever, it would eventually tarnish from where my fingers were in hot paints work. They get all dirty after a while. So, uh, otherwise we want to make sure we get all the dirt out, all the grime off. That way it doesn't dissolve into the solution. Otherwise it will contaminate the item. The item will be contaminated from whatever impurities that are on it and cause a weird finish. Um, I don't really have a bad example of a bad finish, but uh, we'll just, we'll see what happens with this piece when I go to plate it. 
Um, it might not turn out uh, in my video here. So, or it will. I mean, we're going to find out here in step four. So, uh, I think that covers kind of stuff that I didn't quite go into detail on. So, uh, yeah, let's go on to step four then. Okay, here we are. Step four, rated electroplate. Um, first off here, I let the thing saturate some more for about another 24 hours. So I think we're at a total of 40, or almost 30 something hours with a five volt power supply. Now, it would have been a lot quicker if we would have with a higher volt voltage output for the saturation and making the nickel acetate solution. But this is the part here where we're going to need the lower voltage. This is the part where we're going to be plating. So, um, just making sure that this, we want to make sure this is unplugged. We don't want to know weird sparking and stuff going on with our clips that are out here, you know. So, so yeah, anyway. I mean, this is only 5 volts, but it's, I mean, we're trying to be safe here anyway. So, so I'm just going to leave the nickel plates in here. Um, you can tell on this one over here that this is a sacrificial one where it was actually depositing nickel into the solution to create the solution. You can tell that it, 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 ate, it ate some of it away. Um, it was it originally looked like this one here. If you remember right in the video, earlier video, the earlier part of the video anyway. <laughs> um, so next I'm just going to hook up the positive, the positive leads here. I got it marked in white. Um, this is the one that's putting nickel into the solution. And we're going to take the jumper wire that we that I made here and hook it up uh, as well. So we're going to jump off of this one, turn this one over here into a positive now. Or this one was positive last time. I mean, we're actually having two positives here on this. So when the when we put the, the item in with the negative lead into the middle here, we have a field of positive going to the center and a field of positive coming to the center. It will help, uh, it'll help plate better. So that's my theory anyway. I think that's the way a lot of plating, um, larger industry scale, industrial scale plating does their tanks as well. It's just a, you know, pretty much a bigger version of this. So anyway, I'm going to plug the, take the negative clip, hook on to our item here. And I'm going to hold on to that, and I'll be dropping this in here. But i got to plug the power supply in now, so I think we're ready now for this part. And if this doesn't plate fast, I will uh, attempt it with some... With a, I'll attempt it with a brass piece here and see how that goes. Okay, so we're plugged in. Now I'm gonna slowly lower this in and right away we should see some hap some stuff happen here. All right, right away we got some bubbles on the negative terminal here on the piece. So we'll leave it sit there for a few minutes. I don't want the alligator clip to touch the liquid because I don't want this whatever this alligator clip's made out of, to get any sort of corrosion or cross-contamination. I'm also gonna slowly jiggle it around, get some of these bubbles off, so any sort of plating or whatever, it doesn't uh, get infringed upon by being stuck on there. Cause you can end up getting a bad surface um, plating quality, it could be kinda bad. So let's uh, I'll hold this on here for a while and we'll come back in a minute here and see how it looks. Okay, so I've been holding it here for about five minutes or so and uh, I'm going to take it out. We're going to flip the, we're going to flip it over so the other side gets kind of an even coat to it. Um, 
I don't see it turning nickel yet. Uh, so we'll flip it over. I'll do it for five minutes or so. And then I'm going to switch over to a brass piece and see what how brass act, I mean how brass acts in this in this uh, nickel acetate. So. Sorry. Okay, you can see that there's like a a line or something happening there. Oh yeah, there's something happening here at the end. Can you see that? It looked like that in the end originally. So now it's got like a, a hue to it. Sorry, the focus is, there we go. So it's, yeah, it's got a hue to it down there. It's doing something. But yeah, I mean, it's a timely process. This is going to be something you can just do in a couple minutes and be good to go. So, and then the shot, and the more you do it, um, flipping it and, and doing this process here, It'll eventually, uh, it'll eventually, you know, turn to get nickel plated and then it'll get shinier the longer and the more you do it. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And like I said before, I believe, uh, this solution is good forever. And the more we do this, um, the more, uh, nickel deposits into this solution. So... There we go. Yeah. So I'll keep doing this for a while here until maybe we get this thing to turn something. I'll hold it here and then we'll come back and we'll try something. That, we'll try a different piece. We'll try some brass. Stay tuned here. Okay, here we're back. Got a couple brand new brass nuts here. Um, they're kind of small, so I got to be really careful not to touch the liquid with my my clip when I hook on to this thing. So, I mean, I mean, I don't have, I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not really like, you know, super serious to be, to be, uh, preventing that. It's just that we don't know what that's made out of. And it could have a weird reaction to the, the nickel acid. It could actually start pulling stuff off of it or attaching to it as well or causing something. So, they suggest not to touch it in the solution. So I'm just going to try to do the same here. So here we go. Let's see what happens to the brass here. All right, we're seeing bubbles right away too. And if I touch the liquid, I guess it is what it is, but we're not submerging it. I think that might be part of it too, you know? <clears throat> we'll do this for about a minute here. We'll take it out and see if we have anything, any action. And then if we have some action, we'll flip it over and do about the same amount of time. Now we have a nice even coat. Because we don't want like a hard line where the liquid's been touching, you know. I think we're pretty close to about a minute now. I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention to the time here watching this. Like I said before, we're just agitating it right now so we can make sure the bog walls aren't sticking so we can have a nice finish, hopefully. 
I mean, I don't really care. It's just, it's just a hex nut brass one that I'm probably just going to, who knows what to use it for. All right, let's take this thing out. Oh, yeah, look at there. <laughs> nice. It's actually working, huh? <laughs> okay, so this is what we got so far. It looked like this before. Nice brass nut all the way around, you know. And this is what we got now. Let's open this up. It clearly nickel plated it. You can see where the brass was, the nickel plate is at. So I'd say this is success, success, huh? So, um, now, like I said, I'm going to flip it over here. With not Try not to touch it because I don't want my oil on my skin to get all, there we go, get all contaminated with it and stuff. There we go. All right. So let's put it back in here for about the same amount of time. I'm trying to make this as kind of a short video. I don't want to have it too long, you know, but I don't want to like chop it into a different bunch of different parts to where different segments. I think we can do it all here. So let's run this for a couple minutes here or so. And like I said, um, I could keep doing this repeatedly until I get the desired finish that I want. So I can make this thing super shiny. When nickel is, you can see that this nickel piece here, how shiny it is, it could be that shiny. And then if I want to polish it, like uh, whatever, you know, just shine it up. And then, if you're going to add more to it, just make sure you get all the, if you clean it up, make sure, and you want to add more plating to it, um, just make sure you don't use, like, any waxes or anything. And if you do, make sure you clean it up really good. You don't want to, like, contaminate this. All right, what we got here? All right. A nice even coat looks like really can't see the really can't see the line where it was too much maybe a little bit a bigger piece would be easier to work with of course but we did it all right I'm gonna unplug this now and uh, yeah so we started with a brass nut Ended up with a nickel plated nut here. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this segment. And uh, we'll probably be using this for something else down the road. Maybe we'll make plate something else constructive. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.